church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Memphis branch was established in 1973. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit as contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the Word, our Son, is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language the Greek language nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that's made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just as Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe 
abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word or son, a superincorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by divine pattern of the universe. It is called divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel about the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consisted of a most holy place, holy place, and court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go about in this school to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have ten primary aims or constitutional objectives of the Institute and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race nationality, creed, sect, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, a so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, both modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to escapate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth, is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, slogan, speak the truth. We'll have prayer by Dr. Rodney Hamilton. Our scripture lesson is Hebrews, the 8th chapter, read by Dr. Jessica Forsythe. Good morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our hearts and minds of prayer, Yahweh, Elohim. The blessings that he has bestowed upon us and give us the strength and the courage to continue in, in all our endeavors, bringing forth this gospel to the world, not just to the ones around us, because we know he got sons everywhere, Hallelujah. and that they need to hear this gospel being preached. And I got a personal one, thank you for keeping me in here too, 
Father, because I know that if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't have nothing to say and nobody else. And then I wouldn't have ears to hear. Well, you know, with all these blessings, I, 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 I thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading from the Holy Name Bible, <clears throat> excuse me, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by A.B. Traina and the Scripture Research Association Incorporated and reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Hebrews, the eighth chapter. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and the shadow of heavenly things, as, Mo as Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second. For finding fault with it, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will, I will be to them their Elohim, and they shall be to me my people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins, and their iniquities, will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old, now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. I have read the entire 8th chapter of Hebrews. Let the body say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The floor is not open to anyone have a testimony or something that they would like to share with the class that's being in attendance. Um, it's a blessing to know this, this teaching, the, the, the true and heavenly teaching that Yahweh puts in our hearts because it's so easy to get caught up in what other people say and do. And we watch, we watch classes online. There are classes from all over the country online. And, um... Basically, they say the same thing. And every now and then you get one that just goes way out in left field and you're like, what the heck is going on? So, lately, I, well, since I've been here, 
I've been taught that it's not the man that we're worshiping, that we just kind of reference his vision. We don't worship the man. Even, I believe, the man said in his old transcripts mm -hmm. himself that right. it is just as much for you as it is for me. You know, he didn't take glory from what he was shown. He just showed what he had mm -hmm. seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were watching a class, I believe was North Chicago. And they had a visitor from like North Carolina. This man gets up here and talks about nothing but Dr. Kinley. And, and I get referencing Dr. Kinley because we have to give him, he brought this teaching to us. I mean, Yahweh did it through him. <coughs> but the vessel, the, the, the physical man was the one who sat down and gave us all of this or we wouldn't have it. I'm sure Yahweh would have gave it to somebody else, but that's who he chose. And in the midst of praising Dr. Kinley, he said he doesn't read any scripture. Some people do, but he doesn't, and that we're all wrong. That Dr. Harris said, and that's when I stopped listening. Because I heard when I first came into the teaching that Dr. Harris was making a, a, a definite division within the class, which I think is in the scripture too. There's an obvious division, obviously between right and wrong. And uh, I know from what I've learned, that the fourth aim, can you read it for me? Aim number four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. So you guys don't sit there and say, just listen to what I say and take it home with you and worship that. It is, here's the groundwork, go study it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Hear it all the time, study it for yourself, look it up for yourself. So we have in the scripture, Moses got that vision from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And we got John on the Isle of Patmos from the end to the beginning. Dr. Kinley was somewhere in the middle with the panoramic vision that gave everything all around, right? So we have to mention him. We can't take this, at, I, I, I know this and I know that and this is what I see. We can compare what we see to what other vessels see, but as far as teaching it as our own, we can't do that. It's strictly Yahweh, if it wasn't for Yahweh, he would have never seen the vision, nor would have John, either Dr. Kinley either. But um, I just say that to say that we are supposed to study the scripture. And, and when we get up here, we're not, I mean, when the, the vessels get up here to teach what Yahweh has for the day, you can't say I, 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 I 150 times in between I don't study scripture and it's all about Dr. Kinley. You know, I just, it, it kind of hurt me that that man just, that's all he said. He said, I, and, and, and you're doing it wrong. And Dr. Harris said, so you're part of that group that listens to videos every three days and doesn't believe that you need to read the scripture. Uh, it says in the Ames, that we promote the study of the scriptures mm -hmm. right. first. Right. <laughs> so I guess those are out too. I, I don't get it. Like when I got here, I learned to study that scripture and it all comes together though. And now that I understand Dr. Kinley's vision, I can understand those scriptures a lot better. Like they go hand in hand. And I appreciate Yahweh allowing me to see this. Because even if you're in the class, it's not a guarantee that you're going to get that's it. That's right. And that's, that's, it's very special that, that we can get up here and teach mm -hmm. the, the scripture and not the man. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
morning to the class. Good morning. And I'm truly uh, thankful to Yahweh and his son Yahshua for him allowing me even to be in class. It's like the gospel was saying it. And I was thinking, you know, how if it wasn't for the grace of Yahshua, I would not be here. Uh, and when we come, you know, we're talking about giving a reasonable testimony of the things that Yahweh have allowed us to see, know, and understand. And uh, the things that I think about now is, is um, it's, I don't know where it is, it said, with much wisdom come much grief. And um, I look at the different uh, things, like the previous gospel was saying that you hear, but all these things must be because Yahweh had already uh, told us way back in time past, and, it, and even when Yahshua the Messiah got ready to take off the flesh, he told his disciples this. He said, after my departure, grievous wolves will creep in, not sparing the flock. And even from among your own selves, it didn't say outside, shall men arise, speaking perverse things. Okay. So if Yahshua the Messiah and this self-same spirit that was in Dr. Kenley is that self-same spirit, is Yahshua the Messiah, see, and that's the whole thing is that it wasn't like after he took off the flesh then somebody else was set up. And, and it don't work like that. Because he had already said that he will be cut off without a successor to follow. Okay? All of these things are now, you know, coming out for you to see that Yahshua did not lie to you. And that's really what this whole thing is about is to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that your Heavenly Father loves you so much so. He has prepared you for this war. And believe me, this is war. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact, you know. Uh, this, this is the time that we are in. It's a war of words. And that's what's going on globally, universally, you know, internationally. It, it's a war of words. And that's just uh, uh, truth and lie. But it's just always that warfare going on. But if someone can find that scripture where it says, after my departure, because I do like to. Did you want the one about grief? Yes, both of them, if you would. Um, okay, that's going to be Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Uh, first chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start at 17. Okay, Ecclesiastes 1 and 17. Mm-hmm. Replace. And I gave my heart to know wisdom. Now, this is Yahshua through Solomon. <laughs> I gave my heart to know wisdom. Read. And to know madness and mm -hmm. folly. And to know madness and folly. Read. I perceive that this also is vexation mm -hmm. of spirit. Mm -hmm. For in much wisdom mm -hmm. is much grief. Is much grief. And he that increases knowledge mm -hmm. increases sorrow. You see, that's just what's going on now. The more that you see, know, and understand, then when you hear all of these lies, you know, just compound, uh, you know, just all the time, you, you, you sit there and you're looking at class and you'd be like, oh, wow, you get so excited. And they, you know, and they're going in all of a sudden, they're like, pew. You know, the, the, drop, the bottom drops out. But the blessing is, is that Yahshua allow you to see. That's, that's, that's the whole thing. Is that you are learning, uh, even when something is spoken that's wrong, we have another aim. It is to discern and avoid being deceived. And I'm not talking about outside of me. I'm talking about what's going on within my own heart and within my own mind. Because he did promise, and it was in the scripture lesson, he said, after those days, said Yahweh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm gonna work a work in your day that you won't believe, though a man declared unto you. What I'm going to do? I'm going to be in you. And I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to be teaching you what's right. What's good? What's wrong? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you because he the only one that can show. The spirit of truth. He said that the world cannot receive. Why? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. He said, but you see me. How how is that gonna be? 
when he was talking to his disciples in John, the 14th chapter, that's what he was talking to them about. You find another scripture. What was it? You got it. Acts 20 and 29. Acts 20 and 28. 20 and 20, okay. Mm -hmm. take, heed, take, take heed therefore unto yourselves. Take heed therefore unto the other fellow. Mm -hmm. Yourselves. See, don't worry about it. Take heed therefore unto your own self. Read. And to all the flock. Uh huh, read. Over the which the Holy Spirit hath made you overseer. Read, please. To feed the congregation of mm -hmm. Joshua. Mm -hmm. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now he purchased the flock with his own blood. He the one who died for you. Right, right. You see. Read. For I know this. Now he didn't say, I guess, or I think, or maybe. He said, I do know this. <coughs> well, we said, we now know. In the moderation, we now know that Lord is a tile and God is a tile. We now know. Previously, I didn't know that. So he said, I do know this. Read. That after my departure. After I take off this flesh. Read. Shall grievous wolves enter among you. Enter in among you. Not sparing the flock. Uh huh. Also of your own sins. Uh huh. Shall men arise. You see, it's just it's current. You talking about current events? This teaching is current. Read. Speaking perverse things. Speaking perverse things. To draw away disciples after them. And it's all about you know to draw away disciples after themselves. That's what it's about. And that comes with the division. But you know what? The pattern even calls for that too. There are dividing veils in this tabernacle. So it calls for division. Even in the creation. And the evening. And the morning. Division. You see, it's got to come all the way down. Because Yahweh said, so I'm Yahweh and I change not. Okay? He said, now I do know this. He said, after my departure, <coughs> grievous wolves will creep in. Read. Not sparing the flock. Read. Also of your own selves. Also of your own selves. Read. Shall men arise. Uh-huh. Speaking perverse things. Mm -hmm. To draw away disciples after them. Mm -hmm. Therefore watch. Therefore you do what? Watch. You watch. Now he said what I say to one I say to all. That's to watch. <laughs> Read. And remember. And remember. That by a space of three years, mm -hmm. I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Hallelujah. That's good. So that's what this is all, that's what this is all about. Uh, I was reading a transcript, and um, it's been uh, years ago. I said, I got to go dig it back out. When Dr. Kenley had got out of his seatbed and come down to class, and he was talking about the self-same thing. And he was talking about how it was going to come a time where the things that had been taught that he didn't tell you, then somebody was going to get up and say, uh-uh, uh we don't do it. That's out with that. And this, that, and other. And it was all about years ago, it was talking about the blood, the water, the spirit, and the 40. Death, burial, resurrection, ascension, which is the gospel of one Yahshua and Messiah. You see, all of these things, though, and then somebody stand up, and which it did happen, it was, and it come through our international dean, that, uh, Dr. Robert Harris, that we no longer need blood while the spirit poured it. He said, all these things y'all learning is it, it's to no avail. That's not what the founder said. No. You see, but, and it's not putting Dr. Harris up or down. Don't get me wrong. My prayer to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, that no matter what happened to us, before we get out of here, that Yahshua calls us to repent and to see this thing the way it was delivered unto us and be thankful to Yahweh rejoice in Yahshua the Messiah that the labor has not been in vain. You know, so it's not putting anybody down. When, when they are speaking those things, Yahweh set it up for a vessel to be used to speak that. You see, but at the end of the day, it's still for your learning. Can you discern the truth? Because he did say, he said, the spirit of truth that the world cannot receive. Why? Because it neither seeth him nor knoweth him. And he said, when that spirit of truth is come, he's going to teach you all things. So the whole thing is, is when that's evidently 
That spirit of truth is calm because you know the difference when you hear something that's said that's wrong and you hear something that's said that's right. Yeah. And you can say all praises and glory and honor go to Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua because that's what we are here for is to serve, honor, obey, and glorify our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That's what it's about. That is what it's about. I'll touch on one more thing and I'll be down because I'm just so thankful to Yahshua. Because if, if he said, if you keep your finger in the book, I can help you. I just keep your finger in the book. Well, what is he talking about? He said, now look, when Yahshua the Messiah was walking around in the earth plain, he told, he told the scribes and things. He said, now look, he said, you search the scriptures. He said, for in them you think you have eternal life. He said, but they are they which testify of me. It didn't say nothing about Catherine. It didn't say nothing about Dr. Kenley. It didn't say nothing about no other vessel. He said, they are they which testify of me. He said, but I know you. You won't come to me that you might have life. He said, because I don't receive no honor from men. He said, but I know you, that you have not the love of the Messiah in you. Now, is as it was back there, so is it is down here. And the only thing he's doing is pointing, <laughs> pointing these things out to us, to the ones that he have chosen out of the world, to be conformed unto him. That's, that's, that's really what it's all about. <laughs> In Luke, the 24th chapter, after his death, burial, resurrection, he told the same thing about the scriptures. Luke 24, 44. I'm not going to read it all. Because he told them, he said, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the thing concerning himself, himself, himself. This, this vision, all of this is not about nobody else but Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. And we need to keep that before our face. It's not about this old bag of bones, this flesh and blood stuff. You know, people sporting themselves or how well I can speak and I can declare this. And this. No, 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 no. It's only one that's speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's Yahshua. He said, why, why, why I say that? Because he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. It's not about nobody else. So you get up here and boast and brag and ain't nothing but that old damn of a spirit and a physical body acting a fool. And he's going to do that. But Yahweh Elohim, he the one that has power over him. That can put him down underfoot. Read please. Luke 24 and 44. Read please. And he said unto them. Read. These are the words which I spake unto you mm -hmm. while I was yet with you. Uh -huh. That all things must be fulfilled. Uh huh. Which were written in the law of Moses. So if you want to know something about him, he giving you a starting point. He said it was written in the law of Moses. Read. And in the prophets. And in the prophets. And in the songs. And in the songs. See, he didn't leave anything out. Read. Concerning me. It's still concerning me. He talking about himself. Why? I mean, it is just something because it says Yahweh have highly exalted Yahshua and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Yahshua, it didn't say nothing about Dr. Kenley. It didn't say nothing about Saul, Paul, Peter, James John. It didn't say nothing about the dean of no school. It's not about that. And notwithstanding, I don't have anything against anybody. But it's not about you. It's about Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. So, the founder, H.C. Kelly, he said, I've given you all that you need to be okay. And it didn't mean turn around and, and fall down. Even when you go through the scriptures and you find with Ezekiel, when he fell down his uh, uh, you go to Revelation. He fell. He said, "Get off! I too am a man. Get off from there." That's about Yahshua. You glorify him. You glorify your heavenly Father. This is what it's all about. 
So when you go back and you begin at Moses, then you can see in types and shadows everything that's Romans 1, 19 and 20. Everything is pointing him out. So when he came in, he could be identified. He could be identified. Well, look, he can be identified right now. The words I speak, he said, they are spirit and they are life. And that's what is really going on. Don't be uh, <laughs> distracted because uh, about none of these things learn from it. Everything that's happened is for our learning. Is to build your faith in Yahshua, to stand strong in Yahshua? Yes. Because you can say within your own heart and in your own mind, no, that is not true. And I know that for a fact. That is not true. And you don't have to, you don't have to uh, you know, put nobody up or down. Like I said, it's a hope and pray to Yahshua that he would touch their heart and mind, that they will come to the realization of the truth. That's why I said pray one for another, to love the brethren. See, but it's all about when they say something is wrong, it's your divine right to let them know that's wrong. That's wrong. And go on into the scriptures and pull it out and show them that they, they have been wrong about that. And peradventure, like I said, that Joshua will show them when you go over these things with them that they can say, well, yeah, I was wrong. I said some things on this floor that was wrong. He didn't leave me there. Mm -hmm. See, that's the whole thing is that he don't leave us in that state. Mm -hmm. You know, because there ain't no perfection in this flesh. You forget that. But be thankful to Yahweh and be obedient unto that spoken word. He said, begin at Moses, then go back there and begin at Moses. He said, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So if you want to know something about him, you go back there. Because right. Yahweh, he went on, when he told them, you know, through um, Joseph, he said, I die. He said, Elohim will surely visit you. And in the fullness of time, Yahweh Elohim did visit them. And he brought them, just like he promised, up out of the land of Egypt, out of this house of bondage. How did he bring them up, though? He brought them up by the death of the lamb. That lamb had to die. It had to be buried in them. They had to put that blood on the upper limb, two side posts and different from them. They had to have four points of blood to come up to. See, it's got to be Yahweh or no way. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. They had to have that lamb. They had to take it out on the 10th, hold it over to the 14th, kill it between the tweezers, and that lamb, it had to be roast. I don't like roast lamb. Well, you got left out. Roast lamb, bitter herbs, unleavened bread. And it said midnight, there was a great cry. And they come up out of the land of Egypt, to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, out here into the wilderness of Sinai. And they was out here for some 40 years. And then Yahweh Elohim called Moses up into this mount. He called him up here into this mount. And he went on to show and give him, he said, something to teach them. Teach them. So if he was teaching back there, then Isaiah said, to whom shall he teach knowledge? Who is he going to make to understand doctrine? And then you come all the way down, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I, it didn't say Dr. Kenneth, it didn't say Dr. Whoever, it said whatsoever I have said unto you. That's a personal pronoun that you're going to know who it is that's teaching you, who it is that's bringing things to your remembrance, because believe me, as as all this come with age, you will forget what you ate this morning and you really won't even look back. All you know you ate. But who is it that can bring it to your remembrance? That's Yahshua. And you be ever so thankful. But when he took him up here, then he gave him this tabernacle pattern. And then this, we have come to know something about it. Mm -hmm. 
say we've come to know something about it. Not everything. But I'm thankful to Yahweh through his son, Yahshua, that it's an ever-learning process. It's ever-learning. And you don't have to be uh, afraid uh, to speak out against whoever said what. Because at the end of the day, don't nobody have a heaven and hell to put me in for Yahshua the Messiah. That's the one. You know, he said, why fear a man who can destroy this old weather-beaten tabernacle? It's for destruction anyway. You fear Yahweh. You know, and that's where I am in my heart and mind. Anything I can do to help anybody come to a better understanding, any questions or anything, feel free. But we are down here now. We're in the revelation. And all these things got to be revealed. People that's been sitting in class for years and you said, well, and they got up and they spoke good and everything. And now they don't even want to talk to you about this teaching. That's that hurts. They don't have that conversation anymore. That hurt. But it's still your heart goes out to them because I would that Yahshua will prick their heart and their mind. That they will want to know. And they will want to speak of him. Yeah. And they lie down and then they rising up and then they're walking by the way. I, I miss those things. But at the end of the day, it's his purpose, pattern, and plan. And it's going to be carried out. And with those words, I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Rodney Hamilton. Still morning. Good morning, Clay. Good morning. Good morning. And <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Thank you, Yashua, huh, y'all? <laughs> Because it's, it's an honor, a privilege. I know I hear that all the time, but it's a blessing too. <laughs> it is a blessing to be here and, and to be amongst the brethren and to know that some of the brethren really care about your salvation, not just, you know, what you just doing on every day, flim flamming, you know, that's one thing. You know, I appreciate the brethren helping with that, but for somebody to really be concerned about your soul's salvation, that, that's a that's a major leap. Yeah. Can uh can I have asked the fifth chapter, please? Five and one. Yeah, please. Acts five and one. But a certain man mm -hmm. named Ananias mm -hmm. with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Okay. And kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. All right, so in other words, they sold an item or, or, or some something that they had and then held back on the brethren. See, that's what they did. See, they held it back. See, they brought certain, a certain amount of them and set it at his feet, mm -hmm. but they, they held some of it back. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Peter said unto Ananias, Uh-huh. Why? Had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land. So it's a war going on in the background. See? He said, now why Satan? He didn't say nothing about Satan. Now read the first part again, five and one. But a certain man uh -huh. named Ananias uh -huh. with Sapphire, his wife, sold a possession. Anybody here didn't say nothing about Satan or the Holy Spirit right there. Right. See? But then we get, keep reading, Doc. Mm -hmm. And kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So she in, in with it. So in other words, if you mm -hmm. green, you in. You see, she mm -hmm. in with it. She in on, on the deal. Read. But Peter said, uh -huh. Ananias, why? Has Satan filled thine heart to lie uh -huh. to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? So when we hear these people with this 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 erroneous doctrine, who they lying to? They thinking they lying to us, but that they thought they was holding back on the on on, on the brother Peter and the gang, mm -hmm. but come to find out. They was holding back on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So now when these people get up here and be preaching their false doctrine, and they really think they smooth with it, they ain't lying to us. 
They married to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See? Read. While it remained, uh -huh. was it not thine own? And after it was so, was it not mm -hmm. in thine own power? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Thou conceived this thing in thine heart. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Outside of it? No, no, it's, in heart. it's in his heart. See? So it's something in these people's heart got them going awry. Read. Mm -hmm. Thou has not lied unto men. Uh huh. <laughs> See? There we go. Read. But unto Yahweh. Unto Yahweh. See, that's hardcore. Please don't put me. I, I know when I stumble and bumble, y'all to get me straight quick. And I ain't got no problem with that. Because I don't want to be up here lying to who, Doc? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, then, see. Keep reading, Doc. And Ananias, hearing these words, mm -hmm. fell down and died. What? Man, mm -hmm. that's hardcore. Mm -hmm. See, we... we and what was a straight line? Uh, mm -hmm. Doc say you to the line. Uh, read, Doc. Uh. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. So it, it went out to the crowd. Now they didn't heard it. Uh oh. He just fell dead at the, <laughs> cause he didn't cheated the Holy Spirit. Read. And the young men arose, uh -huh. bound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Buried him, read. And it was about the space of three hours after. Then why is it always three? <laughs> Read, Doc. When his wife, not knowing what was done, came. She didn't, oh, see, she, she wasn't around when all this happened. She didn't know what had happened. Read. When his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Uh -huh. And Peter asked her, saying, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Mm -hmm. And she said, Yea, mm -hmm. for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of Yahweh? Behold, Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband uh -huh. are at the door. See, they're at the door. That's it. They become for you. Read the. I shall carry thee out. <laughs> then. She fell down straightway at his feet and died. Mm -hmm. And the young men came in right. and found her dead found and her. carried her forth, buried her by her husband. See, see. Mm -hmm. So, by no means do you want to get up here and, and cheat, a lie, do anything to any of these mm -hmm. brethren mm -hmm. who, you, who you rather you think they, they the brethren or not. He ain't tell you to go out here and try to pick and choose who you think you You ain't know. You don't know now. You can preach the gospel like I said. You preach the word and let the chips fall where they yeah. may. Yeah. Let's get the scripture lesson 8 and 1, please. Now of the things which we have spoken, uh -huh. this is the sum. Now this is this is this the sum or the conclusion or the uh, are we wrapping up the whole story? <laughs> Read. We have such a high priest. Ah, we're talking about a high priest, right? Who a, is Go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. Who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So now, we got our high priest up here next to the throne of the majesty, right? So we talking, the apostle looking right on up into the most holy place himself. Read. A minister of the sanctuary. Uh huh. So both of these compartments together considered the sanctuary. Okay. See, we got it on this chart uh, right here, sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Read. And of the true tabernacle. Ah, uh -uh, the true tabernacle. Read. Which Yahweh pitched uh -huh. and not man. Yahweh pitched and not man. Read. Uh. For every high priest is ordained. To offer gifts right, and say, sacrifices. Oh, every high priest. Now we got one high priest right here, Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now, see, and it said every high priest is ordained to offer what? Now, gifts, gifts and sacrifices. Uh huh. Read. Wherefore it is of necessity mm -hmm. that this man have somewhat also to offer. Read. What for, he got to offer? For if he were on earth, uh -huh. he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Read. Who serve unto the example uh -huh. and shadow of heavenly things. So now this thing is an example mm -hmm. and a shadow mm -hmm. of heavenly mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Read, Doc. Uh. As Moses was admonished of Elohim when he was about to make the tabernacle. Okay, now see, now what did the moderator say now? It, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. That's right. See, 
It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh. Yahweh's pattern, you see. So now then, after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses the top of Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern and visions. So that's what we got with Hebrews right here. Right here. Mm -hmm. See, so now the, 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 uh, the author of Hebrew, which we know is the Holy Spirit, and already took us back here to the law. See, that's mm -hmm. what we are. Mm -hmm. Read, dog. For see, saith he, uh -huh. that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. So now he says, make all things according to the pattern that thou show thee in the mount. That's right. Uh, is that, is that correct? So now we're talking about a pattern, right. a divine pattern, see? And it's the pattern of the universe. Mm -hmm. let's, let's pick up, uh, y'all know my boy Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've been, uh, uh, come through, uh, about a month ago, a couple of months ago, Doc was going through all these, uh, everything fit the pattern. We were just throwing stuff out at her. She was up and knocking them out. Boom! Ooh. Boom, you know, how about this? It's just threefold. She was like, yeah, she showed us how that was threefold and that and how this was threefold. So now we're talking about a divine pattern of the universe, which is Yahweh's pattern, and Yahshua the Messiah being the high priest, mm -hmm. a minister of this true. great sanctuary. Then. Yeah. Let's find out what Ezekiel talking about then. Read. 43 and 1. Mm -hmm. Afterward, he brought me to the gate. He brought him to the gate. Even the gate that looketh toward the east. So now this is where Ezekiel is. At the gate, it look, it is always, top not always face east. Mm -hmm. See, it would, if not for a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, mm -hmm. Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy, we would not know what transpired in him. Now they don't know how that. We got it over there in Leviticus, what is the 18th chapter, mm -hmm. I think it is. Yeah. But it, it don't give you that, that, that divine order how he was right. going in and mm -hmm. out. It just tell you what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And then it don't give you just say he was sprinkling blood toward the hey, he was up there. He turned that mercy seat right. up there. Pressing his mm -hmm. diamonds that state. Mm -hmm. It don't stay dead in there. So you know that it had to come from, from right. God where himself. Mm -hmm. So uh, 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 back to four to three. I'm sorry, Doc. Second verse. Mm -hmm. And behold, the glory of Elohim of the Elohim of Israel came from the way of the east. It came from the way of the east. So he coming in. Behold, the glory of Elohim now mm -hmm. coming the way of the east. So he coming in through this east gate, and he's showing motion. You see, he, he moving. He ain't, it, it ain't just he see, I saw, looked up in the heaven, I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne. He said, no. He's officiating. He coming in. He moved. He got motion. Read, dog. And his voice was like a noise of many waters. Many waters. And the earth shined with his glory. <laughs> the whole earth shined with his glory. Read. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw. Even mm -hmm. according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. All right. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabbat. Okay, so now he took him back. Now, I went on to go back and have to read up, but we'll make a long story short. In the first chapter of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. he, Yahweh take him from the river Shabbat and bring him back out here. He's he looking at this, this tabernacle with mm -hmm. the 12 tribes camped mm -hmm. about it because mm -hmm. he see them. Those four cherubim, which, that's what we got, our eagle, lion, mm -hmm. oxen, and man. Mm -hmm. See, we got the, the, the uh, sickness that was on each side of this right. tabernacle. Like, and, and, and so he, and each one of them had two wings for the, the tribe of heads, right. two wings for Moses, two wings for Aaron and the priesthood, and then two wings for each of the apostles. That give you your 24 elders or your 24 wings. So he's looking back there, and he's seeing Yahweh, as he saw him back here, mm. and it was like as ammo. He saw him like that, like his lawns above was on fire. His lawns, get that just right quick, Doc. So we won't just leave you know, people not knowing what, he, what Ezekiel looking at. Um, you want yeah, yeah. Pick it up down there where he just giving the description of Yahweh. As for the likeness of their faces. Mm -hmm. They four had the face of a man, right. the face of a lion, uh -huh. on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox right. on the left side. Uh -huh. They four also had the face of an eagle. Of an eagle, so an eagle, lion, oxen, him being a pronoun for a man. Mm -hmm. Read the. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Uh -huh. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, 
and two covered their bodies. Read. And they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go. They went and they turned not when they went. Right. So and in other words, hold up now. In other words, they focus in on their spirit. That's why we supposed to be down there, boy. Focus where? Focus on the spirit of Yahweh. We ain't focus on no man. That man gone. How are we going to come up here and talk something universal? Now, we teach the divine pattern of the universe. And you're talking about universal with a man with an English name. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That name right there. And that name was written above all names. Is that correct? Yeah. And see, that high priest had to put up town on that, that blue ribbon with the golden script and holding this unto Yahweh before right. he could, could go in there on that third trip. Mm -hmm. But see, that we had that one high priest whose name is the Brent. He didn't have no, no <laughs> blue ribbon. He had a crown. Mm. See. But keep reading, Doc. As 13. Mm -hmm. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and mm. like the appearance of lamps. Mm. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Right. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. <laughs> now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold. <laughs> Behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures uh -huh. with his four faces. Right. Mm -hmm. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl. Right. And they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So then we had our, 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 our 12 tribes of Israel camped on the outside of the tabernacle and on the inner court or toward the inner circle. We had our four tribes of Levi, sons of Merari, Gershon, Kohath, and then the Aaronites came in through that east gate. See, mm. On that east side. And then you had Judah camping behind them with that, that line segment. So then that's how you pick up what Ezekiel seeing in the spirit. This is what he's looking at in the, in the physical. See, because the spiritual realm got to always have some reflection in the physical. Not the physical, the physical re reflect the spiritual realm, in other right. words. Read, Doc. Uh, uh, when they went, they went upon their four sides, mm -hmm. and they turned not when they went. Right. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes, uh -huh. round about them four. Uh -huh. And when the living creature went, the wheels went by them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, wherever the spirit will go, mm, they went. Now what we have back here when they had camped uh, 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 camp when when y'all when that cloud moved, wow. they had to pack that thing up and they had to move and follow that cloud. And when that cloud mm -hmm. stopped, that when they started and re erected that, that that tabernacle back up. So he looking at it in the spirit realm mm -hmm. and then picking this up in the physical and they out in this holy place. See, we're in the holy place. That's what he's looking at, the holy place. Read, Doc. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Uh -huh. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, mm -hmm. for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Uh -huh. When those went, these went. And uh -huh. when those stood, these stood. Yeah, they in, in, in unison. Read, Doc. Mm -hmm. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, uh -huh. for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. Read. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of sparkling crystal. Now, now then we had a brazen label right here mm -hmm. with water in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So we picking that up, read up. Stretched forth over their heads above. Uh huh. And under the firmament were their wings straight. Right. The one toward the other. Everyone had two which covered on this side, and everyone had two which covered on that side. Uh huh. Their bodies. Right. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters. Now, see, that's the same thing we did. Ezekiel said he just heard the voice of Yahweh. It was like the, the voice of many waters. Read, huh? As the voice of the Almighty, uh -huh. the voice of speech. Right. As the noise of an host. Hmm. When they stood, they let down their wings. So they, they came to it. When they stood, they let the wings down like this, y'all. Read. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, huh. 
when they stood and let down their wings. Right. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. See something now this is like a like, like three dimensional what he giving you a description of really. Cause he's, he said this, this right here was above them. And then the throne is above that. See. So he ain't looking at it from a three dimensional perspective. Read the As the appearance of a sapphire stone. As the appearance of a sapphire. Now we didn't heard about that sapphire. And then Moses say yep. it's out of feet. Mm -hmm. Oh. It was like, oh, 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 oh. The of the there you go, right, dog. Mm -hmm. Read. And upon the likeness of the throne uh -huh. was the likeness as the appearance of a man right. above mm -hmm. upon it. Right, read, dog. And I saw as the color of amber. As the color of amber, read. As the appearance of fire huh. round about within it. Right. From the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward, I saw. As it were the appearance of fire. Right. And it had brightness round about. And it had brightness round right? <laughs> Yahweh no joke, but when he show up on the scene, yeah. man, he, he calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Read, Doc. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Now we had that bow right, mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. in, in the cloud in the day of, day of rain. Talk about Noah. Now he done went back to, to Genesis. Read. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. Mm -hmm. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. Ooh, this is, this is, he, he, he's screaming the glory of Yahweh. Now he's seeing it. He's looking at it just like Moses and, and John and Dr. Kenley. He's seeing this, this super incorporeal man right here. Mm -hmm. Read, dog. Uh, when I saw it. When he saw what happened to him. I Fair. fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spake. Yes, ma'am. Now let's go back to uh, the fourth and third chapter. So now this is what Ezekiel saying he saw coming through the east gate. He saw Yahweh Elohim and he saw these, these 12 tribes. Because he said he saw them as their parents as they were when he was back at the river Shabbat. Mm -hmm. So he was looking back here in this holy place. So now we got most holy place, holy place, and court roundabouts. And when we pick Ezekiel up on the first chapter, they he looking back here. Yeah. So now we got Egypt is in dog. That's mm -hmm. symbolic of that court. There you go. Court roundabouts. So then go through the divided waters of the Red Sea, walking mm -hmm. through on dry ground and into the wilderness of Sinai. And we got this tabernacle back here. So that's what he was looking at. But now he said he's seeing Coming in through, well, I thought he took him to the east gate. Go back to Ezekiel, the 43rd chapter. Third verse. Uh -huh. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, uh -huh. even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. Right. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And I fell upon my face. Once again, he back there, he came. <laughs> but y'all is so bright and magnificent. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It really ain't no script. We can't. I, sure. I guess he had to tone himself down so he could even put him on his charge. Oh, if he, yeah. he, we yeah. wouldn't even be able to discern what it was. And, and, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to me. Now, I, I'm just speaking for myself. Just this, I went to church for a while. You know, I wasn't in there like part of a lot of other people. But I, they just failed to give me some kind of evidence or proof in which... Doc, I always tell them, show proof of what we're doing. We ain't here for you to take our word no, for my. anything. And not that we ain't about anybody else. No. Shoot. He had to roll us in here like he rolled in. Yeah. You know, shoot. And that's, but that's humbling. Yes. Keep you in your place. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. Look, I can blame it on him. <laughs> If you want to take all the credit, then look, when the time for blame to come, be ready to take that too. So I'm going to give him all the credit. So when I start that mama, he can come in and say, that way I ain't got to be, that's right, I ain't got to be held accountable. But I told him be, oh, that, nah, nah, obedience is much better than sacrifice. Cause I'm running low on money now. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, fourth verse. Uh -huh. And the glory of Yahweh came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So now we know that this tabernacle always faces east, and so did this gate in this temple up here face east. But now one caveat: mm. what 
Ezekiel is looking at now. He, now he, she already read where he just saw the vision where he came to destroy the city. Mm -hmm. So at this time, the city already destroyed. There is no temple over there. So what he looking at? Here, the most holy place. Looking at the true temple. Mm -hmm. with, with, we just read in, in, in Hebrews 8 and 1. Uh, uh, somebody get a Revelation 15 and last verse. Keep reading, Doc. Fifth verse. Mm -hmm. So the Spirit took me up right. and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of Yahweh filled the house. So now, this is the inner court. This man right here, you can say that's Ezekiel right here, mm -hmm. being brought right. to the inner court. Mm -hmm. So now you don't see nobody else around in here. See this? So. He, he the only one seeing this vision at this time. All the other men around him, Ezekiel was sitting around these guys. Like in uh, verse 8, he was he was sitting around a bunch of uh, elders. And Yahweh came and snatched him up by the lock of his hair. <laughs> and see, they be sitting around waiting when he come back around. Hey, hey Zeke, what you see when you went up there this time? You know, <laughs> they waiting to hear what he got to say. So now he done brought Ezekiel in him. So to say, we think about himself. Uh, uh, keep reading, Doc. So the Spirit took me up and mm -hmm. brought me into the inner court, and right. behold, the glory of Yahweh filled the house. Mm -hmm. He filled the glory of Yahweh filled. Now, we have heard that before back here mm -hmm. and right here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, read. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. So it was a man standing by him, and he said he heard the Spirit speaking out of the house. Read. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. Son of man, Son of man, this is the place of my throne. No, hold up, hold up now. I thought his name was Ezekiel. He the twin, but now Yahshua said what in the sixteenth chapter of uh, uh, Matthew say as what was as the disciples of Peter say who do men say I the Son of man. So now we know he said. I come to, she just read, had a read ways I come to fulfill some things. Oh, oh okay. So now he got to fulfill this son of man uh, handle too, don't he? Mm -hmm. So now he done brought him in there. Now who, who got a, a, a revelations at 15th and last verse? 8th verse. And the temple was filled with smoke uh -huh. from the glory of Yahweh and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple Till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. So now, so John on the Isle of was wasn't the first one to see Yahweh go in this temple. Ezekiel saw him too. Keep, read that first verse in the 16th chapter. And I heard a great voice mm. out of the temple saying to the seven angels, mm -hmm. Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of Yahweh upon the earth. Right. That's good. That's good enough. So he heard the same voice coming out of the temple. Mm -hmm. Back to Ezekiel, Doc. So now it, we know where he's standing too. So both of them standing right out here in his outer court. Mm -hmm. In the greater and more perfect type of now, in the temple of Yahweh at South Sea. Read. Seven verse. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, uh -huh. Son of man, this is the place of my throne, mm -hmm. and the place of the soles of my feet, right. where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel for the age. Right, he gonna dwell in the midst of the children of Israel for an age. Read, dog. And my holy name. Oh, 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 oh. That's where you got to slow it down. And it, this <laughs> Yahweh talk, this Yahweh speaking yeah. from the throne out here to, to Ezekiel. In the spiritual temple, in the greater and more perfect tabernacle, in the most holy place itself. Read, Doc. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. So what they doing when they calling him Dr. Kennedy? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His holy name, the children of Israel will not defile. Read, Doc. Neither they, nor their kings, by the whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings uh -huh. in their high places. Right, so, they, so these old, old idols, they had high places, they raised up to mm -hmm. them and stuff, see, and they still doing it now to this day. Mm -hmm. And they coming out showing that stuff now. Oh, what you got, the Bohemian Grove? <laughs> uh -huh. What about Quaker Town, Pennsylvania? Uh -huh. uh, Beverly Hall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they steeping a uh, uh, Idolatry and the, the high up ones, they 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 Luciferians to the 
No, not when, as my mama would say. Can't <laughs> read, dog. Hey, first. Uh -huh. In their setting uh -huh. of their threshold uh, by my thresholds <laughs> and their posts by my posts mm -hmm. and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name. What? Wait, wait. They done done what, dog? Mm -hmm. They have their Stop my holy name, man. It's Yahweh doing the talking. Now, you ain't told nobody, uh, 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 somebody quick, go back to Moses, uh, 3 and 13. I, I know I'm, I'm jumping That's around. Right. That's okay. All right. But I, 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 I hear Dr. Smith always go through this, and I, it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, this, this stuff right here is for real. Because we done went through the name, she was going through the name, and the doctor, the previous mother was going through the pattern. So now we would have brought up the name. He said they didn't defile his name. A couple of weeks ago I was here. Doc had gone through all that research she had done. Mm. Showing forth where them folk defiled that main name. Mm. They ain't had no business changing nothing. And we shouldn't change a thing about our teacher. And not be ashamed. We ain't ashamed to get up here and talk about Yashua and Messiah. I don't Never. care what they say. Never. We ain't ashamed of it. And we ain't bagging down either. Read, Doc. And Moses said unto Elohim, mm -hmm. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, mm -hmm. The Elohim of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What is his name? Read. What shall I say unto them? Mm -hmm. And Elohim said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Aya, Asher, Aya. Mm -hmm. And we got that said, open too. Aya, Aya, Asher, Aya. I will be what I will to be. Read, dog. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, Mm -hmm. I will be has sent me unto you. Mm -hmm. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses. Moreover unto Moses, read. Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, uh -huh. the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, uh -huh. and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. Have sent me unto you, read. This God. is my name forever. Forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Now, is he still generating? Yes, he is. I got a grandson now. I thought I'd never see his dad. <laughs> <laughs> so he's still generating. <laughs> Come on, uh. <laughs> so he says his name forever. Let's go back to Ezekiel, please. 8 verse, 43 mm -hmm. and 8. Mm -hmm. In their setting of their thresholds by my thresholds, and their posts by my posts, mm -hmm. and the wall between me and them, right. they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. And they just defile his name. See, by the abominations they have committed. Read, dog. Wherefore, what? I have consumed them in my anger. Wait a minute. I thought God is good. <laughs> All the what? time. What? <laughs> what? Ain't that what they be That's doing? What they say? The Lord, he good. What y'all would just say he gonna do to him? Wherefore, I have consumed them in mine anger. So now he's speaking of it. It ain't even happened yet. But as far as he was saying, it's already paid. This is done deal. Mm -hmm. Read, dog. Uh, now. Now. Let them put away their horses. Put all that stuff away. Doc was just saying she hoped that they could repent and put that old stuff away and come on back into the uh, true knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah. Read, dog. Uh, and the carcasses of their kings. Mm -hmm. Far from me. Get the all that's, that's God. Read. And I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Forever. Read, dog. Thou son of man. Now, now he back to who? The son of man. He ain't said nothing about no Ezekiel. <laughs> the whole book named Ezekiel. I can't find his name in there but one time. <laughs> but now that's the only time I can find it. Somebody else probably come back and find it two, three more times. Right at the beginning of the chapter. That's uh, right. Of the book that says Ezekiel. All the other time, he's saying son, son of man. man. Mm -hmm. So he ain't even wow. addressing. Right. Doc was just up and talking about this old flesh going back. He ain't even... Ezekiel ain't got no flesh. He up here. How you gonna have some flesh? Mm. Flesh and blood can't get up through down. And, and, and son can do all they want to do. They ain't gonna get back. That's what they trying to do. <laughs> they, they talking about they, they trying to release some demons from hell. No, Satan trying to get back up here in hell. That's what he trying to break that veil. The Yahweh got. See that second veil. I'm sorry. This one right here. He trying to break through this one. Because he can come to this one. You remember when he... When the children of Israel uh, 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 came through the dividing waters of the Red Sea, see, uh, uh, Pharaoh and his host drowned in the sea. That's right. They were cut but, off. 
But they were still out here being played by them serpents, weren't they? And then Yahweh had Moses bring that, that rod and put that serpent up on it. That was Satan out the flesh. So he can come back up like this. He can't go back through that though. See. Read. Ten. Ten. That's the one we're looking for. Read. Thou son of man. Uh-huh. Show the house to the house of Israel. Now see, he's showing them a house that he has seen. Eh? We don't want to go back. But he gave him the diagram. Go back to uh, Ezekiel 40 and 1. 40 and 1? Mm-hmm. So this after the, the Sodom temple had been destroyed. The city had been burned to the ground. Nebuchadnezzar and his crew, the Chaldeans, they came over here and they took everything and brought it back to, to uh, 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 Babylon. Brought all that stuff back and put it in his treasury houses and stuff, the, the stuff that Yahweh had. So when, when he had his vision right here in the 43rd chapter, there is no Solomon's temple there. Nor is there a Zerubbabel temple because Ezekiel just told y'all he was about to rip your Shabbat. That's like the ghetto. Really, in the Babylonian ghetto. Because Daniel was inside the king's palace on court. See, but Ezekiel was out there in the, in the, uh, in the ghetto. The Yahweh had a man on the inside and a man on the outside, you see. Really. Ezekiel 40, verse 40 and 1. Yes, please. In the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, mm -hmm. in the fourteenth year after that, the city was smitten. In the self same day, the hand of Yahweh was upon me. So it's after the city was smitten. Mm -hmm. So Yah, Ezekiel ain't looking at no physical temple. Read, dog. Uh. And, and brought me thither. Mm -hmm. And the visions of Elohim brought he me into the land of Israel. Right. And set me upon a very high mountain. Set him upon a high mountain, read. Upon which was as the frame of a city on the south. Mm -hmm. And he brought me thither. And behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass. So he saw a man and his appearance of the man was like the appearance of brass. Read, With doc. a line of flax in his hand yeah. mm -hmm. and a measuring reed. And he stood at the gate. So he had a measure read, and he was standing at the gate, right? Mm -hmm. Read, dog. And the man said unto me, mm -hmm. Son of man. Son of man. Behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears. Uh -huh. And set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. Say, all that I shall show you. Excuse me. He, he said, let them make make me a sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. And then he, he, he uh, ran his hand over uh, David and told him to have Solomon... Build him a temple, right? right. Mm -hmm. that, is that correct? Yes. He told Moses, let them make me a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And he told David to have his son Solomon build me a temple. Mm -hmm. So what did he tell Ezekiel? Mm -hmm. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes. He, he said, Look. And hear with thine ears. And listen. And set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. All of that. So in other words, it, it's already there. For to the intent that I might show them mm -hmm. unto thee art thou brought hither. And then I show them unto Read that again, darling. For to the intent right. that I might show them unto for, thee. So in other words, for the reason I brought you here is to show them unto thee. Read. Art thou brought uh-huh, read. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. Declare, all right, now go back over the 10. So he said, declare mm -hmm. this. What he, so the next three chapters is showing that man with that flash and that rod measuring his temple that's already been built. It don't tell you what the temple made of. Mm -hmm. It'll tell you the doors made out of wood. But what kind of wood? See, now we know that they made oh, that. These vessels in here, they should have wood. Right. And overlaid them with pure gold. What about the two uh, uh, cherubim that was in the most holy place in Solomon too? They was made of olive wood. Mm -hmm. See, and then he had cedars from Lebanon. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you what kind of wood it's made out of. Go ahead back to the uh, 10, uh, 43 and 10. 
thou son of man, mm -hmm. show the house to the house of Israel. So in other words, show them all that I had measured unto the house of Israel, or the children of Israel, in other words, read. That they may be ashamed of their iniquities. <laughs> they may be ashamed of their iniquities. Read, doc. And let them measure the pattern. Wait, wait, wait. I thought he was showing them the house. <laughs> Now he done, just like he said, okay, I got you, Doc. Just like he told Moses, show, uh, uh, let them make me a sanctuary out of the pattern that I had shown thee. Mm -hmm. So told David after the pattern. Mm -hmm. Now he got Ezekiel saying, show them the house and let them. Can somebody give me the definition of measure right quick before I sit down? Measure. Because he said measure the what, Doc? And let them measure the pattern. Mm -hmm. So he. These they take a rule out there, see that we got different charge, different sizes. Mm -hmm. So now we get over here with a ruler and talking about we're gonna measure the pattern. That ain't well the mine and uh lasting it it measured different than the one y'all got down here. <laughs> Keep reading, dog. And if they be ashamed yeah. of all that they have done, uh -huh. show them the form of the house. Show them the form of the house, and then it had to been son of man came down and show. He said, "Show him the form. Show him the. Right. Give me measure right quick. What does measure mean?" The American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language mm -hmm. measure the dimensions, quantity, or capacity of anything as ascertained by measuring. All right, come on, read. We know that. Length, area, volume, and mass are basic measurements of material properties. Right. A reference standard or sample. Oh, 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 oh you mean too bad. That's what I'm looking for. A what? A reference. A reference. See, see that's, what, that's what this thing is. A reference. Said, now, in, in this school, we go about to show proof. How that everything is made and operated according to the structure and function, and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And then what? Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. Escape the past. So this is the standard that he said for him to show to the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't showing them this standard or putting everything like Doc said, blood, we got the blood, the water, the spirit from the Holy Anointing, all out here. We ain't going through that stuff. Nobody never said that Charles was salvation. No way. Where did he get that from? Mm -hmm. But with these Ooh, few words, <laughs> <laughs> I like to say thank y'all for y'all time. Our next speaker will be Dr. Olivia Dobbins. I'd like to say good morning. Good evening. Good, morning. good afternoon. Good afternoon and good evening. And good evening. Uh, I truly enjoyed what Yahweh had to say yes. through the uh, through the vessels, and uh, Yahweh willing, I'll be able to pick up a few of the trains of thought. Uh, I want to go back to the prayer. I wanted to just holler out when the vessel was praying, but you know, we can't be <laughs> crazy. Too crazy. Uh, uh, somebody said, yeah, we watch y'all video. Y'all have fun. <laughs> uh, but that song, um, uh, there, there are two songs. Uh, one, one is, Where Would I Be If Yahshua Hadn't Chosen Me? Okay. Uh, uh, and we were joking about that the last time we went to Chicago. Me and Felicia was singing. I think we was also singing and down, playing and singing and down there in Florida, you know, and and not uh, not taking it light, cause that's the question. Where and if I said, where would I be? Y'all <laughs> had chosen me. Uh, and, and then there's another one, but it, but, but, uh, it, it eludes me. But the whole thing is, is that if he had not picked us up from where we were, we didn't even, we was a lost ball in high grass and we didn't even know we was lost cause we might've been a little dissatisfied, but we didn't find a comfort zone even in our dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. So he had to come and find us and it is by mercy. And I think maybe, 
uh, some of us may have, have taken it for granted, but I remember how, how it was preached to me. And I know I said, in the back of my mind, I said, I hear you. I hear you, but I can't fathom that one. What does it say? You can't perceive or conceive, whatever. I could not conceive. I couldn't give birth to the fact that I wasn't safe just being in the Institute. I thought I had made it. It's like in the baseball yeah. game. I done slid home. I done, I done slid past, you know, this, you know, and I go in the dugout and somebody down there say, out. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm safe. I made it here. You know, so we wouldn't have anything to say. Yahweh did something um, over in Habakkuk when it talks about, I'll work a work in your day. You won't believe, though, if you told you. Uh, and, 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 and we fill in the blank with what that work is various ways. Well, one thing is, I'll work a work in your day that you won't believe. Well, you see men, and we perceive men. So Yahweh work a work. I'm going to come right where you are as a man. Well, see, that's what it says. Had they known who he was, oh, they, would not have, they would not have crucified. And that was Yahweh manifest mm -hmm. in the flesh. Right. Uh, John says, that which our hands have handled mm -hmm. of the word of life. That was a work that wouldn't believe, though it be told. But that's why they still say Jesus is a half God. He's God's <laughs> son, you know. Yeah. Yahweh manifested in a vessel. And came himself to tell us about his mystery. Because can't nobody tell your story better than you can. <laughs> so can't nobody tell Yahweh's story better than he can. So it's an honor and a privilege to be able to have any kind of a, a reasonable testimony about the things that Yahweh has revealed unto us since being in attendance in the school. Uh, and the vessels, one of the vessels started out with the, the division that's in the school. Okay. Um, one thing, many things about it, but, but one thing about it is that in, in the world, and I'm rambling with this, so go with me. In the world, you, we got Stephen Hawkins, okay? He, you know, and, and, and now we got Neil deGrasse. <laughs> but Stephen Hawkins was the man that so-called brought brought uh, science down so the lay person, you know, the common person could understand it. And he turned his back on everything. I mean, doc, he did a Dr. Kittley, one. He did a 180 on everything, all them theories that he had. And now he's putting... All of his concentration on string theory. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yeah, wait, let me, let me try to put the layman's spin on this string theory. And pardon me if I've got a wrong understanding, but I, I did look it up many times. Uh, I thought it was talking about a string like st I said, now that can't be so. It can't be talking about strings is out there in space. You know, like string, like string, hang on. <laughs> Come and loose the <laughs> Yeah, loose the <parade. laughs> You know, you certainly can't be talking about that. But when I listened to uh, various uh, tapes of Hawkins, he's emphasizing that these strings are, have vibratory right, properties. Right, right. So the vibration makes, vibrations can do one of two things, color or sound or both. Or both. That's, that's, that's the trip. So these strings are vibrating or they're creating a sound. I think there's a scripture, I can't even halfway paraphrase it. Their, their line has gone out. In the earth, and that's what has happened. This preaching has gone around the world. And when we talk about uh, watching the YouTube, and hey, we got them down there in um, uh, Jamaica, preaching hard, preaching hard. You talking about here some here some old time preaching? You know, bring up one of those Jamaica classes. But there, there is a sound. There is a line, there is a thread that runs through all of this teaching and ties it all together. Mm -hmm. And when we 
hear that. Have you found it? Psalms 19 and let say 4. Okay. Yet their message is gone out through all the earth. Mm -hmm. And their story to the end of the world. Mm -hmm. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a message or line or sound mm -hmm. that is going out. And I, I think about that when, you know, and it's not that people are playing favorites or speakers of this, that, and the other. But when you hear... When you hear this gospel sung in the way that it is supposed to be sung, mm -hmm. then it makes it's you want to get up. It may, it's, it, it's, a, it's a vibration, you know. <laughs> Can you just say, I can't stop my leg. <laughs> right, right. You know, it, and it strikes right within us. It mm -hmm. resounds within us, you know. And we can just smack our lips and say, that's right, that's right. I you think about it. Now give me Romans 1, 19 and 20. You should read 19. Uh, Psalms 19 and 1. Okay, 19 and 1. The heavens declare the glory of El, mm -hmm. and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Mm -hmm. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Yet their message is gone out through all the earth, and their story to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Okay. So I think about Romans 1, 19 and 20. Because this is how he shows me in taking something natural. And showing me the spiritual essence of it. And it all has to fit the pattern. That's the whole bottom line. Otherwise we're just looking at stuff naturally. So, and, and it's just junk. That's one of the things that. That the other camp is saying, oh, you you look at that stuff and you all correlating it back to. No, it, it it's all going to correlate back. Because mm -hmm. Yahweh, the thing says, in it has he set a tabernacle for the sun. Mm -hmm. So everything in there is going to pertain to Yahshua the Messiah or Yahweh on his throne. And it takes him, himself, to point these things out to you. Read. Romans because that which may be known of Yahweh. So that means something can be known of Yahweh, who we say is invisible, inscrutable, incomprehensible. In, 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 not, cannot, cannot, uh, which the world cannot, the spirit of truth even, which the world cannot receive. But now, because that which what may be known. You have permission. Mm -hmm. Read. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. It's going to be made known or manifested right in them. Read. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. So if we want to know what was in Dr. Kenley or who was in Dr. Kenley, Yahweh. Because he's the one that showed all of this to, to us. And if you don't believe, you know, I'm not saying you don't, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes he'll just put you in a situation mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I had to do that research on the website about ordination and looking up these different denominations and you look and you say, nope, they ain't had no visitation. Nope, they ain't had no visitation. You know, Yahweh has not shown them the mystery of his will. And we should ever, mm -hmm. ever be thankful with that. Read. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So take natural things, things that are seen, to point to the spiritual things which are not seen or really heard because they are spiritual and they are spiritually discerned. So taking something natural to explain something spiritual. Um, when you look at um, some of these, uh, we was dealing with Oscars and Academy Awards and then all the spinoffs from them, you know, you, the Oscars, the, the Tonys, the this and the that, the daytime drama, everybody, you know, the nighttime shows, uh, what they call it, the prime time got, got things, BET, -E you know, the Stella Gospel Awards, the NAACP, I mean, just everywhere you look, somebody got an award and they're honoring somebody. So it was either... It was either BET or the NAACP, or maybe it was just one where they was honoring the divas, you know, because they that they they even got something. So they had the divas. They had uh, Patti LaBelle, 
uh, they had uh, Gladys Knight and um, Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, the three divas. And then they had, now this is back uh, when, like when Queen Latifah was, was still singing before she got off into the acting and stuff like she is. So you had these female rappers and stuff, and they were, they were hit singers, you know. Mm -hmm. They had some of them trying to sing <laughs> Gladys Knight and Patti LaBelle and uh, Aretha Franklin. And, they, and, you know, and, and you could see those women sitting there with that smile like, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Coming in your own way with A-B selection. <laughs> you know, they couldn't carry the weight. They didn't have the depth. They didn't have the range. They didn't or have the strength. Or experience. But they singing it word for word for word for word. They kind of cut some of that out. Now what they try to do, I've, I've, I've noticed more of it, um, even like in the, um, I can't even call the name of it, where, where they give out the music awards. They try now to match people. In other words, they wouldn't have a country western singer trying to sing an R and a B song, mm -hmm. you know, and vice versa. They try to get people that sing similar to the, the person, that genre, if they're going to sing. Now what is all of that about? This is a song. This is a love song. From right. the very beginning, it was a love song. Adam laid down his life for his bride. Because if you want to understand that he laid down, that Yahshua the Messiah laid his life down. No man take my life. I do what I lay it down. All them times that they got ready to deal with him and they said, oh, he's gone. And they got, he stir him up and stab at him and stuff. And they go to lay holes on him and boom, he's, he's in Capernaum. You know, he's somewhere else. But when it's time, when it's time, he let them manhandle him and take him out that garden and then from judgment hall to judgment wow. hall. Why? From the very feast, of, from the very first miracle, he tells his mama, what you coming to ask me about the wine for? My hour is what? Not come. Then you go over to where we always read in the 17th chapter. He said, Father, the hour what? Is come. So all this time, now the hour has come. I, I'm gonna have to go up there, and they're gonna lay hands on me, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to lay it down. Mm -hmm. So with Adam, Adam seeing his bride totally, she's dead man walking. <laughs> That's what she was, cause she partook of the fruit, yeah. and it was dead. Death decree on her. He willingly dies. The whole scriptures, you know, we go into that about Adam was not deceived, yes. this, but he willingly gave up. That's a love story. You know, uh, uh, I watch these different, you know, them sci-fi stuff. And I think, you, now I haven't watched that, but I saw a preview of some of Saw and Saw 1, Saw 2 and stuff. And some of those kind of shows are like, would you give your life for somebody else's life? You know, and, they'll, and I've seen somewhere they, the, 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 the perpetrator will get a husband and a wife. And they'll put them in a situation that um, one of you is going to die. And let's see who's going to do this. You know, and you watching them struggling and crying and this, that, and the other. And usually the one has to almost like throw themselves in front of the, you know, because the other one is not going to stab them, you know. But for the love, one of them makes that sacrifice. So it's just showing that Adam made a sacrifice for love. And that's all it was, love, love, love and a family affair. We can yeah, say that yeah. it's a family affair. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, his sons, his son's wife, with Noah, his wife, his sons, and his son's wife. What was that? That's, that's a, a family, family affair, affair in there. Abraham. Family affair. Children of Israel. When we talk about that, it says when uh, uh, um, and, and Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron above the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt. And then he says, do what? Whisper it in the ear. That's a family affair. Because out of Egypt have I called my son. That's a family affair. For love, for love, for love, for love all the way down. For love. Uh, it's just, that's what... Yahweh does. 
and when we when we're singing is is actually it's, it is it, it it is undescribable. Just, just we we like them little junior rappers. We be trying to and I know and we ain't got to sing. and it's like Yahweh just push you and say, let me tell it, and it just start pouring out of you. Him singing. His song. Mm -hmm. And when you see and you see it all of the overlays. Somebody mm -hmm. asked me, what do you see? All the overlays. Yeah. When we go into 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. it says, this is the goal of our declaring to you the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, how mm -hmm. that he died. And you see the overlay. Wow. How that air, absolutely nothing mm -hmm. escapes a pattern. You see an overlay of the pattern. You see that altar of sin sacrifice with the four points of blood on it overlaid mm -hmm. over that door and you see the four points of blood on the door you see a sacrifice being offered up overlaid you mm -hmm. see a lamb had to be sacrificed mm -hmm. and you see him coming through the divided water of the mm -hmm. red sea just mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. brazen mm -hmm. labor and over there revelation yes. say god voice sound like many waters mm -hmm. it's all going all of those overlays so all of us have stood up there in years past and sung and some done got happy and saw something because they got a touch from Yahweh. And others have just said, drop the mic. I ain't got no touch. I don't feel the joy. It didn't give me the desired outcome. Give me 1 Corinthians 15. 15 to 1. Because the things that the things that are happening now, it is un it is unbelievable, yeah. except there's some history to it. Yeah. Okay, when when um back in the day, because I can't Dr. Kennedy died in February of 76. I came in, in July of 76. So I got to see and hear from people first hand. First hand. Yeah. And eyewitnesses, and uh, I would, I'm coming out of college, you know, and 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 where when you do your your formal concerts and stuff, you all are unified. You got a uniform on. Oh, yeah. And when we go into the conventions, I would ask them. Now, the first year, we went. Um, we wanted the women were going to wear yellow. But what we did was they said that Dr. Kelly said, don't, don't be like the church. Don't be like the church. So we said, well, we'll all wear yellow, but all of our dresses and gowns were different. But we all bought the same cup. We got the, all got the same fabric at the same store. And then the men had the ties and uh, 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 the little handkerchief and stuff. And then over the years, uh, it, it got down to just wear black, mm -hmm. wear black bottoms white top, a black bottom, a blue top, or whatever. I think one year the state of Tennessee we had, uh, what was it, blue, purple, scarlet, or we had white with just, you know, but it got away from, we wasn't wearing no choir robes and stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't formal like that. And then most times you see the squires get up there, they, I pardon me, they just be ragtag. They just come on up any old <laughs> kind of way and sing. Well, it was for a point. You know, Dr. Kelly said that there's a distinction between us and them, how the world does and how we do. Now, I ain't talking about nobody, but uh, I did see some pictures, and they was all dressed in white tuxedos and white gowns. Now, if that ain't like the world, yeah. that's Father Divine or Daddy yeah. Grace, yeah. one of them. That do and Dr. <laughs> Kelly had dealings with them, and he said that that was wrong. Yeah. Now, if you're going to dress how he pointed out that that whole religious organization that had them in that white was wrong, then how do you say that you are following him? Mm. All of this, um, uh, before the split came so hard we were talking about in memphis meditating mm. on yahweh get up in the morning mm. and face the east face the rising sun and meditate on yahweh call on yahweh and i swear my hand to yahweh the only ones that 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 came back and testified some you know some said uh, i i i thought about it i tried or whatever but it was the kids 
that didn't have no preconceived right. notion about who she was and why she tell me to do that, got up in the morning and did the thing and came and talked about how that felt to communicate with Yahweh. Okay, something. They turned me into Dr. Harris about meditating on Yahweh. Now, flip the script. What they, I know what they're telling people. They're telling people, meditate on Dr. Kenley. Now, I'm seeing that you didn't want to meditate on Yahshua the Messiah. Right, right, right. You know, you turned me in because I said meditate on Yahshua or Yahweh early in the morning. But y'all are meditating on Dr. Kenley and having coffee with Dr. Kenley. And he in the shower with you and all kinds of stuff. You know, and I'm saying, oh, you back up, you cry, you it, it, it's like in the matrix, a whole lot of faces and emotions come over you when you see these things. But a peace has to come if it had not been for Yahshua. If it had not been for Yahshua. But the point is, what saves you is nothing of yourself. Nope. He, him in you. I, get 1 Corinthians 15 and then I need you to get Colossians 1.26. Moreover, brother, uh -huh. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. We're taking a stand in this. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 first Corinth, uh, 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 Romans uh, 1 and 16, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, for it is the power mm -hmm. of Yahweh. It takes power, power to get them out of the land of Egypt. When, when the vessel, I'm realizing, but the vessel was talking about wars. The scripture said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Another one said that bloodshed touches bloodshed. Well, what you got? You got Syria butting right up against uh, Iran. That's, uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, Iran that's butting right up against Iraq. That's right up, right up under Afghanistan. That's right next to Pakistan. You know, all of this stuff that's going on. And I saw something about the Somali pirates. I said, I thought that boys was called. Me too. <laughs> and they've been quiet for a while. Yeah, yeah. And the, Soma the Somali, uh, 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 pardon me, the Somali pirates, look, they know where their headquarters are. They know where those boats go back. We got all these satellites and stuff. We got the satellite. The Russians got the satellite. Everybody got satellite. can see a match on the ground. You know they can find that and end that if they want to. But it's just a type of uh, he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. This bloodshed touching bloodshed. We ought to know that the end is coming. And one vessel had something read about mass dying out of of uh, of, of antelope in the in the, in the or one of them stands. Knowing that all of this, how? We should know that the end has come. The fact that apostasy mm -hmm. shall abound. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even this is the thing that hurts me. It's not that you say this, you say that. I say Dr. Kenley, you say Yahshua. It is the venomous hate. Yeah. It is the venomous hate mm -hmm. that comes mm -hmm. up. And I just got to say it. Look, if you got an issue with bile... If you got an issue with bile on your stomach and acid on your stomach, it's going to give you halitosis. In other words, it's going to manifest out of your mouth. So if you got hell and damnation and hatred and enmity and emulation and strife and wrath, which is idolatry, it's going to come up out of your mouth. Cannot speak peaceable one to another and it's hurtful because we was all pretending we were pretending like children we were pretending that we we had our Sunday best on and we was pretending not a parent say it's a free fall and we in a free fall it's fur flying and now we see it Who's, who are the children of the married wife mm -hmm. and who are the children of the desolate? Mm -hmm. Well, what makes desolate? Um, the abomination of desolation, where standing ever the stand oh, where it are not yeah. in these vessels. Mm -hmm. Yahshua the Messiah has taken some as his 
bride how mm -hmm. by putting his spirit within them in righteousness and some have left in that state mm -hmm. and in the fullness of time it we it has the tears. the tears all the scriptures and oh, stuff yeah. it just it just had to be made manifest and mm -hmm. it's a hurtful thing mm -hmm. you you skipping along and all of a sudden one of y'all is a tear. I'll just put it like that. One of y'all is a tear. And one is, <laughs> and, and one is a wheat. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, 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 I feel the pain, but I'm you know, like, oh man, it's, it, it'll take you out. That's why you got to just realize you got this little path right here. Mm -hmm. This old little, yeah, little, 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 little path. But it's just like Stephen when he went to preach in the gospel and did what he looked up yeah. and he saw heaven open and what he saw Yahshua and Messiah. That's all we can do. Just keep on preaching the gospel. Just like that old horse got them blinders on it. That old horse. I mean, Romans 1 19 and 20. We was yeah. out there on Beale Street. Mm -hmm. Just like we wasn't drunk because it was 12 noon. Had some visitors. We just laughing and talking girls afternoon out showing the visitors. We just laughing and stepping on and off Beale Street, you know, up off the curb and down, you know, because it's, you know, no traffic. Yeah. We waiting for Dennis to come around and pick us up. We standing on the corner. We done walk down a little bit from the corner. We laughing and talking. We stepping back and forth, back and forth. And finally we turn around here. Big old horse standing here. He done eased up on us. He done eased up on us with the buggy. You figure with all that laughing and stepping back and forth. We stepping, you know, the heat at least, you know. He is right. There, but that blinder is on him, and he's looking straight on down the street. He ain't paying no attention to all that foolishness and folly that's going on. I say, Yahweh, old Dobbins, <laughs> just keep your focus on Yahshua the Messiah. The chips gotta fall where they may. But I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Read. How that the Messiah died for our sins. Wait a minute, go back up again, because I left uh -huh. something left out. Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I declare unto you the gospel, uh -huh. which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, mm -hmm. by, by which, which <laughs> also uh -huh. ye are saved, uh -huh. if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. Unless you have believed in vain. How can there be a, the same way when we preach a beginning at Moses? When you go back over here, you find out that there was a, a, a Yahweh marched them out there. It I can't even imagine. It's like Yahweh got a spiritual clicker. Click, 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 click. And when the last of the 603,550 died. And the 144,000, <laughs> click, click, yeah. click, 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 were 20 and upward, able to go to war. Yahweh said, now it's time to cross. And it came to pass 40 years. Blood, water, spirit, not 39, not 41, not 42.5, and they rounded it down to a 40. It was blood, water, spirit, 40 years in the wilderness, and then they cross over into Canaan's land. This preaching, this is a word. It will work. You won't believe. You mm -hmm. won't give no credit Don't to it. To the it. scripture talks about by the foolishness of uh, preaching, preaching. Yahweh chose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he chose it. And then some say, what? Mm -hmm. It didn't give the desired outcome. Mm -hmm. By which also ye are saved Amen. if... If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, uh -huh. unless you have believed in vain. Unless you have believed in vain. I went to a, a Thursday, let's see, Wednesday, I had a choir rehearsal, a chorale rehearsal. Thursday, I had a chorale rehearsal. Saturday, it was an hour and a, a half. And most of that time was with the, the man that actually wrote the song was going over his song with us. And I said, well, okay. I think I got it. You know, I it, it, it doesn't lay right. The timing, you know, I, I'm classically trained and, and it, it, it don't lay right, you know. And I'm saying, well, I got to figure out how this thing lay because I got to sing it and stop trying to sing it like 
I would think Bach and Beethoven would have wrote it and just gone and sang it like it is. And I said, okay, in the middle of the night, I found myself going line for line like I had music book up there. All in rehearsals. I was worried that I couldn't remember all this stuff anymore like I did in my college days where I could remember a whole big old score book like that. But Yahweh said, look, through the rehearsing right. and the rehearsing, mm -hmm. going over it, mm -hmm. going over it. Right. Or you didn't understand that point. Let's go back and let's that. do what? Let's break it down yeah. to its most common denomination. Now let's run it back up to speed. Unless you have believed in vain. You got to keep it in memory. How do you keep it in memory? Oh, that, that song, my soul looks back and wonders how I got over. How did they get over? Miriam them told you. The horse and his rider, Yahweh, has thrown. But what did they do? Blood. Water. They were led by a spirit. Right. And I'm thinking about over here when the vessel was talking about John's, uh, uh, John's baptism. And that's that's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's that he's there, uh, baptized. And see why they got it right here at the Red mm -hmm. Sea. Yes. After the mm -hmm. baptism, what happens? After they were baptized, the they did what? Went straight <laughs> away <laughs> into the wheel. What? What? Did they have a compass? No. A, a GPS that took them all around yes. like mine. Yes. 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 They were led by the Spirit. So Yahshua the Messiah, after his baptism, he was led by of the Spirit straightway into the wilderness. They tarried out here. 40 years, he was in the wilderness for the day. For the day. The day, vessel four talk, a day for a year. That's a, that's a calculation. Okay, we talked, the vessel talked about how that them bodies of, of the enemy washed up on the shore, but Yahweh showing there's something, what, metaphysical. There's something beyond the flesh. Because that which is within them plagued them in the wilderness. Plagued them, bothered them, vexed them. And they succumbed to it. So what had to happen? Yahweh said, look, let me show you what's biting you. Okay? When you go to the dentist, don't they have some good teeth and some bad teeth? Yeah, okay. When you go to the to the women's, they show you fallopian tubes and uterus. They show you all of this different stuff. Uh, when you go to the uh, the, the other G, the regular GP, they they showing you about uh, diabetes and all. Of that. <laughs> she yeah, 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 it's sort of like choose one, <laughs> choose choose one, so you can see. What's vexing you yes. and what the result of it would be. You know, the people keep talking about uh, your cholesterol, your cholesterol. Well, she did the flip chart. Whip, whip, whip and show cholesterol collected yeah. up in the yeah. vein. Uh -huh. had to, had to, they had to lift it up and say this is what's biting you. Mm -hmm. Are you going to you gonna succumb to it mm -hmm. or not? Are you going to take the medicine or not? Mm -hmm. So Moses had him do what? Make a brazen serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up. Mm -hmm. And still, I'm looking at my own self. No, I'm Oh, get that medicine feel. They would look at the serpent on the pole and live. Look up and live. No, they would rather die or succumb out here to the adversary. The adversary had mastery over them. That's why they could build a golden calf and say, this be the Elohim. And these folk here were down here in the camp. They weren't hollering about, don't do this, don't do that. Aaron, the main rain leader, talking about, well, yeah, let's do this, break off your earrings, and this is what's going on. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. And then when Moses chided him, he said, now you know them people. Now they are. You know, you know how they are. I just, I just had to do this. Now, when the adversary, Yahshua the Messiah, was led in the wilderness, He's showing you who has power over right. death, hell, and the grave. Right. Cause when the adversary, uh, it said uh, afterwards he was a hunger. See, he's at a weak point. Right. The adversary come to him and start talking trash, yeah. and he yeah. turned it right back around on him. <laughs> That's uh, right. Uh, take, chase, chase these stones. And when you think about <laughs> what stones? What stones? <laughs> What if you took a sign and just? I swear, if you took a sign and just walked out there to, at the seminary school, change these stones into bread. What stones? Yeah, what stones? If tell thou me tell if thou canst tell me. What stones? 
This man come and tell about the 12 stones okay. that were put in the River Jordan. Okay. That's why John is at the River Jordan. X marks the spot. He's right there at the spot that the children of Israel went through. And then they took 12 and took them over there on the other side and pitched it at the camp in Gilgal. That's where Yahshua and the Messiah was. And the adversary said, he he called to take these stones and turn them into bread. Got two sets of stones. Like you got two two tables of stone. Jot and tittle, jot and tittle, jot and tittle. If you don't go over it or hear it and bring it back, you forget it. You gotta keep these things in memory. Did I there was another a script in Colossians? One in uh, twenty-six. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations. Is it some is it some more up there? Uh I, right there, it's fine. We're out of time. Even the mystery. There's a mystery. How are you going to be saved? Is it by works? I was listening to a vessel talk about uh, carnal ordinances. Uh, us, us knowing. See, that's the point. All of us sat there and sung together. We knew. Because it hurts. And I hear the vessels and I hear myself when people that we looked up to. And I know it didn't come out of my mouth, though. But I, I, I'm not exempt. I'm I, something. I'm in the same bag. I fell. I succumbed some kind of way. But some people have said, if ain't nobody got the Holy Spirit, I know so and so, so and so got the Holy right. Spirit. We we would have went down like Captain Morgan, <laughs> betting that that person had the Holy Spirit. And it's and it's pitiful because Yahweh take that person and take them, turn them around. Why? So we can, he's trying to tell you, let go of the flesh. See me. me. See Yahshua. Right. They that worship him, what? Must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we still hanging around uh, uh, like the toilet paper. It is just dragging <laughs> on the foot. We still following after the flesh. And Yahweh just taking these vessels out, just taking these giants out, just taking them out, taking them out, left and right. Why? To try to show us, are you going to put your faith in what I have shown you right within yourself, manifest in them, right. or manifest in somebody else? Mm -hmm. So even the mystery, which has been what? Hid from ages and uh -huh. from generations, but now is made manifest to his sons. To his sons. And now, see, we got two, two sons. You got the mm -hmm. son of righteousness mm -hmm. and the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Read. To whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery mm -hmm. among the nations, which is the Messiah in you. The Messiah in you. The Read. hope of glory. The hope of glory. And then this man, <laughs> which Yahweh in a vessel, because mm -hmm. if the stick had come up here and it just started <laughs> talking, <laughs> only... We'd have left out of here. We were the only a hope or anything else, you know. But Yahweh hide himself in a coat of flesh and say, It's your only Yahshua the Messiah within you is your only hope. Not your own strength, your own knowledge, because he's going to show you your body going to betray you. Your memory is going to uh, uh, betray you. Those that you held in high esteem are going to betray you. It's sort of like, when, when, how much do I have to take before you put your hope only in me? Mm. With those words, I thank you. Hallelujah. This concludes our lecture for today. Let us stand by doxology. Our doxology is taken from Jude, verse 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No!
Yahshua. No man cannot hinder me. Ride on, King Yahshua. Ride on. No man cannot hinder me. No man cannot hinder me. No man cannot hinder me. No